ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله تعالى وان خير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وان كل محدثه بدعه وان كل بدعه ضلاله وان كل ضلاله في النار اعاذنا الله منها واياكم brothers and sisters in islam we are in the last couple days of the month of rajab in one more month and hopefully allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us and grant us the opportunity to reach ramadan we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we all reach ramadan healthy and strong enough to fast pray stand in tarawih and spend from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon us Allahumma ameen as we had toward Ramadan this is the time where we start planning not only those who are involved in the masjid at the leadership level but at the individual level and at the family level while there is nothing wrong at all by preparing the list of food that you want to put on the table but that is not going to be our topic today we're going to be talking about how to really prepare to ramadan psychologically and physically and if i if we had more time we will talk about the food not only because it's good but because it adds certain positive memory to our children so do not overlook that it just happens that we live at a time where people celebrate anything from their birthdays to anything that happens in their lives and as we mentioned before even the remembrance of al isra and al miraj that was supposed to be yesterday most probably there is no record of history that the messenger himself celebrated it even though it's one of the most important event in his history he did not celebrate it the sahaba did not celebrate it but they remembered it they wrote about it they taught it they studied it they used it to move forward because we are not about celebrating what happened in the past we are about planning what we are going to celebrate in the future and that's what ramadan is all about you're supposed to work hard for 30 days to reach the eid and that's when you celebrate hard work and it is not easy and requires a preparation and if you hit ramadan without get, being prepared there is no one to blame but the self as one of my mentors once told me 
lack of planning on your side does not constitute an emergency on my side. Lack of planning on your side does not constitute an emergency on my side. If you do not prepare properly for Ramadan, you're not going to be able to blame anyone, whether it's the community or the circumstances around you. You have no one to blame but yourself. And for that reason, we're going to spend a little bit of time to look what is the proper preparation, again, within the limited time available to us. First of all, I would like to start with the dua, even though there is no really specific dua that is relayed on behalf of the messenger about Ramadan. There is one about the Hilal, which he used to say at any Hilal of any month. But yet, anything you could come up with is a good dua. And dua in our deen is the peak. A dua mukhul ibadah. In other words, I cannot say this is the proper dua for Ramadan and this is the proper dua for Ramadan. Anything you could come up with because the Sahaba used to always make dua. Say, oh Allah, make us reach Ramadan. May Allah give us the opportunity to fast Ramadan. May Allah give us the proper bounties so that we spend and we exercise and we fast and we are more productive in Ramadan. Start with the dua. The second one is the proper intention. And I want to summarize that briefly with the first hadith. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks and he says, إِذَا تَحَدَّثَ عَبْدِي بِأَنْ يَعْمَلَ حَسَنًا If my worshipper speaks about coming up with a hasana, it's like an intentional talk to himself, a person speaking, say, I am going to do this in Ramadan. I'm going to read the Quran. I'm going to spend money. I'm going to fast properly. I'm going to stop doing this wrong thing. I'm not going to be visiting this website. I'm not going to be talking about this person. Whatever good hasana you think of, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذَا تَحَدَّثَ عَبْدِي If my worshipper speaks about doing something good, فَأَنَا أَكْتُبُهَا لَهُ حسن. I will write it. We didn't get into ex executing it yet. Just the intention of being in that position of doing a good hasana, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote it for you. Yes, it is nice and okay to, as we see in Ramadan, we see the dua, making the intention, the niyyah and this and that. That's nice, but that's not my talk. What I'm talking about deep inside within yourself, what are your intentions for Ramadan? Let's make the intention that I'm going to read of the Quran, not only from cover to cover, but some translation of the meaning if I could afford it. And if you could read the Quran fluently, make the intention you're going to read it twice or three times if you can. Make the intention that you're going to repent between you and yourself. You don't, you don't have to let people know what kind of sins you did. Whether it has to do with money, whether you, it has to do with the way you deal with your wife or the way the wife deals with her husband or the son, the way he deals with his dad or the father dealing with his children. Look at your life from last Ramadan. Look at your life from last Ramadan. This is an opportunity. It's a shower to cleanse the soul and figure out what are the things you want to say. Oh Allah, I want to repent from that. And I have the intention that this Ramadan is going to be different. Make this Ramadan as the new start for a new way of life for yourself. Make the intention that you're going to change not only your attitude, but the way you deal with people. And there is a big difference. I could have a good, good intention, but people continuously tell me you're always looking bad at us. I need to sit down and say, maybe I should look in the mirror. I could be a very good businessman, but everyone is telling me for the sake of money, you're making everyone run away from you. Sit down and look at yourself. Are you running to run a business or are you running to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And can you do both? And did Uthman radiyallahu an, one of the richest among the Sahaba, surrender any, any of his good ethics to make money? That it would be an intention for a person who's working in business. Make the intention that you will relay this deen 
The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Balligu anni walaw aya. If until now you did not speak to your neighbor, maybe this is a good opportunity. Put a plate of sweet, put your mask on and visit your neighbor and say, Ramadan is coming up and I wanted to remember you with one plate. Make the intention, Ramadan is a good excuse to come to yourself and say, I am changing. Otherwise you're going to leave it and you're not going to be planned and you get no one to blame but yourself. And make the intention to make the proper ibadah. And as you may have noticed, I left ibadah possibly all the way to the end. Because if we do not change the way we deal with people around us, our ibadah will be just physical movement that does, does not change the world. And if we do not change the world, we will not leave anything behind us for people to say, may Allah have mercy on these people who brought us peace and tranquility into our community. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد I'm going to go through a list of few items that I made for myself I ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to help me to come up with as much of that as possible Read a little bit, whether it's online or through a book. Refresh your memory about the fiqh of Siyam, what's right and what's wrong before Siyam comes upon you. Fast of Sha'ban, the, the month that is starting most probably this Sunday as much as you can. Sayyida Aisha said she never saw the messenger fasting as much as he did in Sha'ban. But it's not a must. There are other hadiths that the messenger may not have fasted in Sha'ban. Do it for yourself. Get yourself prepared. Change your habit. If you are addicted to coffee, maybe this is an opportunity to get the caffeine out of your body. If your body is not used to fasting, you did not fast every Monday or Thursday or the three white days of the month from last Ramadan until now. This is the opportunity to put your body back in good shape as far as standing in Ramadan, inshallah. Stand up the night. You know there is a hadith, the messenger never left Qiyam even during travel. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. He did not put Qiyam aside even when he was traveling. Imagine that he would do jama' and qasr and prayer and then at night he will stand and pray. And if you did not do that from last Ramadan, get the opportunity now and put yourself and your family to do that. Read the books of tafsir of the Qur'an. The Qur'an is sent to open the heart, to open the mind with whatever you can. If you could only read the tafsir and the, the meanings of the first verses that speaks about this, the Ramadan, Ya amanu kutiba alaykum siyamu kama kutiba That's fine, start with that. Put yourself on a program where you're going to read a page every day. Look at people around you within the social distancing possible and see if you could have a family get together. What can we do for Ramadan? And finally, look at your accounts. And before the masjid come up and say, we need money, you should come and say, I have this money ready, so that when they raise the flag, I have my money ready. Be generous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. We don't need to wait for those who are in charge in the masjid to put the box before Ramadan gets, look at your balances. Do as you're doing your taxes now. Say I have this 1,000 or 100,000 set aside for the masjid. Look for people who could take it from you and invest it for you for the hereafter. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will all benefit from this Ramadan and we plan for it. We have about four weeks left. That would be about two, four, four Mondays and four Thursdays. At least try to fast those Mondays and Thursdays and get yourself and your family into the habit of what Ramadan should look like as we hit the Hilal of Ramadan. And listen to the announcement in the community about the prayer and the arrangement for the Taraweeh and how this is going to be done. 
And before I do the dua, I want to remind everyone that the community is holding a second khutbah or Jum'ah prayer every Friday about 40 minutes from now. Because as we head, head toward the rainy season, it's not going to be easy for people to pray outside if the uh, ground is muddy. There is plenty of space inside. The service, the second khutbah is happening at 2.40. If you can attend the second one, it will ease the traffic jam a little bit, will give you an opportunity to be socially distanced, and you would be able, inshallah, to finish your prayer and head home or back to your work safely. I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in supplication, say ameen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa qina adhab al-nar. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت إنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك I ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to make us all among the best children for our parents اللهم آمين I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all among the best parents for their children, Allahumma ameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the best neighbors for their neighborhood, Allahumma ameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the best citizens for our country, Allahumma ameen. Ameen, ya Rabbal Ameen. Inna Allah ya'amru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhul qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Ya'idhukum la'allakum tadakkaroon. Wa la dhikru Allahi akbar wa a'adham. Allahu ya'lamu ma tasna'oon. Wa qum ila salatikum yagfir lakum dhunubakum. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهد الله فلا مدل له وما يدل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده رسول أما بعد فقد قال تعالى في القرآن المجيد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والخادمين الغيف والعافين عن الناس والله والله يحب المحسنين. We give thanks and praise to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for affording us the opportunity to be in this sacred masjid to glorify His name and we send the rood and salam of our noble Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Paradise, my respected brothers, have been prepared for the righteous and the God-fearing. Uh, so who are these people and what do they do? We may perhaps wish to follow in their footsteps and be blessed by their company. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite wisdom has described the righteous and the God conscious in Surah Al-Imran, uh, Al which is chapter 3, verse 133 of Al-Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, He said, These are people who spend, give, donate, in his way, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala way, in times of plenty, when they have a lot, in times when business is good and they are having lots of money, they spend. But also, they spend in times of hardships, adversity, when their business may not be making lots and lots of profits and they may not be in a position to give as much as they would like to yet they give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa has said to us in a hadith he said a man once came to the Prophet and he said oh messenger of Allah which sadaqah were I to give it, um, would give me the greatest amount of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, he said, that you give in charity whilst 
you are in good health and you are feeling miserly and that you want not to give this wealth out that you possess because you fear that you may become poor that you will suffer the consequences of poverty and at the same time you want to be rich in that state of mind is the best for you to give charity and donation for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you see respected brothers Aisha radiallahu anha she one day the only thing she had in her possession was one grape and she give it she only had one onion and she give it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us ittakul, ittakul nar, tamra. that um, guard yourselves against the fire even if by giving a piece of date giving charity my respected brothers removes the torments of the fire from us giving charity my respected brothers removes calamity from our lives likewise allah went on and he mentions these god-fearing people and he says well and those people who at the time when they're able to utilize their anger because someone has done something wrong to them that they're able to express their anger they choose instead to control their anger those are Allah described as the people of Jannah once Ali radiallahu an his um, assistant his servant she is pouring the water for him to make wudu and accidentally something might have distracted her and she threw the entire jug on top of him now that is a point and she sensed that he became really angry he became mad and she said well kathimina bil guys and put and those who are able to check their anger well afina and in nas and immediately they're able to forgive people she, she also said and forgive people then Ali radiallahu anhu said okay I forgive you and then what she said afterwards wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen this is Allah saying wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen but then she is caught in the ayah now and she said wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen and Allah also loved those people who are the doers of good that is they do good not only for themselves but they do good for the remaining of other people and other mankind Allah loves such people who extend goodness towards their fellow human beings and then Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu said ah, you're free for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these my respected brothers are the qualities the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said to us laysa shadiri busura that a strong man is not one who wrestles who's physically strong and can fight and hit his opponent with one tremendous punch that a strong man is a person who at the time that he will express or could express his anger he chose to withhold himself he chose to control himself it takes a lot for us to control ourselves because anger within our body is like fire raging within us that is why the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa more or less said that you know when we are in a state of anger then we should try sitting and if we are sitting and still we feel anger then we should lie uh, sit down some of the uh, ulama has said that we should make wudu or we should uh, drink water because anger is like fire within our bodies by doing these acts it's a, it's a sort of what um remove that high energy that we feel because when we become angry and we are mad then it befogs our minds we become irrational sometimes and we don't think clearly and that is why 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually have a special gate in Jannah. It's called Qadhameen al ghaith from this same very ayah, a special gate in Jannah for people who are able to retool their anger and to forgive people easily. It's not easy to forgive somebody who has done you wrong. Somebody has went and they have said despicable, nasty things about you and then they come in front of their faces uh, in your face and they want to say, brother, please forgive me. It's not easy, it's hard for you now to have to go through all that bad utterance, abuse of, by someone behind your back, now they're coming in front of your face seeking apology and you have to say, you know what, okay, I forgive you for what you did. Not an easy task, but if we could have that spiritual elevation, if we could have that iman and faith within us to look that person in his eye and say, brother, you did me a lot of wrong, but you know what, for the sake of Allah, I forgive you. That's really a high quality, a noble act, a high moral act. And the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to us that anyone who likes to have lofty uh, palaces in paradise and wishes to have his rank elevated should forgive the one who has done injustice to him and present gifts to one who has never ever given him anything and join with one who had severed relationships with him. So the, uh, the other incident that I would like to mention is one time the great Imam Abu Hanifa, somebody accosted him while he was in the market and he was walking around and this man would not stop hurling abuse towards the Im imam he hurled the most vilest of abuses and remarks you could ever think towards the imam but the imam remained quiet he didn't see anything the imam went home and he was a merchant so he had gold and silver coins he put them into a basket well decorated and he went to the man's home and he knocked on it and he said today you have done me a good deed you have given me all your good deeds and because of the good deeds that you have given me i'm now presenting this gift to you now you could imagine how astonished the man is that here is it that you wrong this man and he's giving you gold and silver coins and telling you know what today i have gotten some good deeds from you so the man started to reflect and he's thinking and he's saying ya allah uh, naturally how is this so unnatural that i'm getting gold coins from this imam because i abused him and he started to immediately seek allah's forgiveness and it is said that he too become a disciple of the imam and he asked the imam for his forgiveness and become a great great um, student of the imam eventually now what is the ayah pertaining to that incident well, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says alladheena idha fa'alu fahisha and who when they have committed a shameful act we all are human beings shaitan is closer to our juggler veins we are created weak so Allah is saying to us those whenever they commit a shameful act or they have otherwise sinned against themselves immediately they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then they seek forgiveness of their sins so this is what the man was actually doing immediately he um, remember Allah he seek forgiveness he made a determination in his mind that I'm not going to make that sin and do that sin again and then he repented and of course he asked the Imam's forgiveness so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah to make us among the God-fearing to make us among the to imbibe within us these qualities that we too could practice it and become um, considered inmates of Jannah. That we can have these qualities that make us make paradise easily achievable for us.
الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله فقد قال تعالى في القران المجيد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا وصلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد وكيم الصباح